got to meet Linda. I got to, I, I, I got to uh, hang out with Linda at the Super Bowl at um, the, the, what was it called? The Snowfest, some alien Snowfest up there in, in Bear Lake or Big Bear, whatever it was. And uh, she's, uh, she's very delightful, very positive. I, I ran into her again recently in Sedona. She's very, very polite, very positive. However, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to try to drop any bombs here. So don't worry, Rick. But, you know, there's even things about Linda that may or may not be told one day that a lot of people might be surprised about. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent. I think well, yeah, there's always a side of person that uh, people uh, I know of, of, of her and, and others, though. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not, I would never come out and say anything. Uh, she's a great one of the best UFO researchers out there. I mean, she's really, really good at what she does. And she was directly asked about what? this on Kurt Jai Mungle's show, and I think her her answer was pretty clear that, you know, intelligence officers do what intelligence officers are told to do. So she said that herself, if anybody wants to watch that. That's, uh, that's do very have clear. Unconventional and John yeah. Thank and, you. and Lou waiting. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Unconventional. Thank you. Thank you. So, Rick, that's your boy again from the Ivory Coast. I'm back with my last question. That's a follow-up to my first question. So, since everyone, I mean, the believers and the skeptics, both agree on one thing, and that one thing is that the government knows the truth, right? So, but then only one group of these two refuse to accept the government finding or conclusion on the topic when he says there's no evidence of alien or a NHI anywhere so far. So I feel like the believers decided, I've made, made up their mind already, regardless of what the government going to say, unless it says what they believe in, which is the existence of NHI or alien even if there's no evidence shown, it doesn't matter. They just want, I feel like they just want the government to say alien exists because anything else the government will say, they will, they will say the government is lying. But at the same time, it's contradictory to say that only the government knows the truth. But the same entity that we claim that knows the truth, we're refusing the finding. So I'm confused. <laughs> So what should the government do at the end of the day? Say they exist and show us nothing? And that's it? Because we have Arrow, we have all these people that are in the position of finding out the truth. Like people like Elon Musk, people like the president. These people are in the position of knowing. But all of them said the same thing so far. Yeah, well, but yet the believers refuse to believe that. So it's like they made up their mind regardless of what the government has to say, unless the government is saying what they want to hear, which is the existence of alien, whether the government showed them anything or not. It doesn't matter. That's what I feel. And I think that's kind of, uh, I don't know if I should say unfair or, I mean, it's weird to me. I mean, it's not uh, logic. There's no logic in that. If I say I believe you, but then you say something that I don't want, then I'll say I don't believe that you're lying because I want you to say a specific thing. You know what I mean? Any yeah, sure, that? certainly. Um, first of all, there are, there, there are two, well, I, this is Rick Doty, talking, not anybody else, that what I consider true believers, and there are uh, people out there who are uh, born skeptics, and I don't have any problems with skeptics, uh, but then, then there are people out there that want to disrupt the, the true believers, distort them. And um, I actually know, uh, and I know this for a fact, that some of these people that are criticizing me are, in fact, working for the government. They want to disinform uh, or discredit me because I'm putting out something that the government doesn't want to hear. Number one, there's two people out there that I know for a fact, and I've confronted both of them. And also, regardless of what the government said, the government could come out tomorrow. Uh, the president, President Biden, could come out and say, you know what, people, UFOs 
Our UAPs are real, and we've had contact with extraterrestrials. Thank you, and goodbye, and walk away. And there would be a number of people that would immediately criticize the president for saying what he said. Oh, I don't believe that guy. He's probably crazy, or he's too old, or, I mean... You, you can't satisfy everyone, and I've never tried to. Um, uh, I have a hell of a fan base with Gaia and, and uh, the other things that I do, and those are, the, those are people that believe, not necessarily believe in me, but believe in the message. Believe the fact, not just Rick Doty, but look on the Internet. Go through your, your research and find that there's, there's, I would say, thousands of pieces of paper out there that can prove that the subject is real and you just have to do this you have to do this on your own and get this stuff and listen to what it's read it and listen to what other people are saying but do you agree with me that it's harder to prove that the existence of alien than to prove that they don't exist yeah absolutely yeah exactly because people say show me the alien Show me the extraterrestrial craft. I want to see it. Bring it to my house. But at, park it at the same, my... Yeah, but at the same... <laughs> no, but not that. Not bring it to your house. <laughs> I hope not. But, uh, <laughs> but um, at the same time, don't you think it's kind of uh, uh, fair? It's more human to or logic to ask for this type of proof because we're human beings. You know, if I say... A cow exists, you know, I have, I will show you a picture of a cow or, you know, some interaction with a cow. You know what I mean? Like for you to believe me, that's human nature. I think. Yeah. Unless it's a religion, then that's different. You know, people that believe in God, haven't seen God. Right. You know what yeah, I good mean? Point. Good point. Unless then this topic is some sort of religion. I'm not saying that is, but if it is, then in that case, Hey, by all means, the believers to each they, they believe. You know what I mean? They don't hey, have brother, to show not, any proof not, of anything. Not to cut you off, we got a lot of hands up, but we right, appreciate sorry, your contribution. You, You've all been right. a great contributor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Go ahead, John. Thanks for waiting. Thanks, Eric. No problem. What a great space. Um, okay, so thank you, Nicole, for following up uh, on my last question. I, I had two, and I didn't get to ask the second one. So here's my second question. So, Rick, as you know, many people in the government who work within these programs and even members of your advanced working group had personal experiences with the phenomena. You know, now, so did you ever have any sort of personal experiences with NTI or sightings, anything, beings inside or outside of your Air Force experience? The only experience I ever had was <clears throat> before I was just a kid. I was about I got 14 years old, and my brother and I were, and my dad were camping in a place called Wanakina Lake up in upstate New York. <clears throat> and we were, we were camping, fishing, and my brother and I were down by the lake. And uh, we had, we had uh, caught some fish, and we were cleaning the fish. And it was dusk. You know, this is summertime, so it was late. Uh, probably nine o'clock or something, <clears throat> and we saw something in the sky. And my brother, now my brother was the UFO nut in the family, so to speak. My dad would call him. He was the one that would write a True magazines, uh, the Georgia Damsky books, and so forth. So he was a believer, and and he's four years older than me. And he said, "Oh, look, 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 Dick." And back then, was, everybody called me Dick. I, he said, "There's it. There it is. There it is. A flying saucer." And I look up, and this thing was doing all sorts of strange things in the sky. And it wasn't that uh, high up in the sky. And I watched it and watched it and watched it. And he said, don't move. But, and so <clears throat> John took off and went over to get my dad. And uh, by the time my dad came down, the thing has disappeared. So I don't know what it was. Uh, you know, we explained. My dad said, well, could be just a plane. Uh, we were close to... Uh, Griffiths Air Force Base, maybe something from there. <clears throat> That's really the only time I've ever had any sightings prior to entering um, government service. <clears throat> now, I saw things out at Area 51 uh, that was flying. My, my a partner, my other OSI agent partner and I, we had some, th some things to do at night. We were outside the test range. We were 
<clears throat> coming back from Beatty, and we were going through the South Gate, and we were driving up to uh, to go back to uh, the Contorman area and, and um, at Area 51, and we saw this thing, and we were inside the test range at this time, and we saw this strange light going straight up in the sky, almost like a laser beam. <clears throat> so we pulled the Jeep, over, and we were in a CJ7 Jeep. That's what all the us I drove out there back then, and we, we just stopped. I thought, well, what the heck could that be? And he said, uh, you know, we were tra talking back a laser or some testing of some kind of weapon or something. And we watched and watched and watched and watched. And we were out there for probably an hour and a half just watching this strange thing. I don't know what it was. It would go way up in the eye and come back. It would go way up in the sky and come back. And it wouldn't go to the ground. Of course, we were miles away from it. But then there would be a ball formed, some kind of ball. And the ball would spin <laughs> and so when we got back, of course, the next day we, we went to work and I was dying to know what that was. I just, uh, you know, I, I asked around, but nobody wanted to tell me. I went over to the security, flight security office, and I was asking the flight security guys. I said, hey, I'm OSI. Uh, uh, what was flying out uh, in a southern range last night? And they'd say, uh, classified. Okay. Thank you. So what it was, I don't know. But that's something that was fascinating to watch, but I don't know if it was ours or theirs. Well, thank you so much for all of your time answering all of our questions. And I, for one, cannot wait for the Doty book. I'll be the first one in line. Thank you. Thanks, John. Go ahead, B. Hello, everybody. Thank you, uh, Mr. Doty, for this space. Um, I'm sorry if this question has ever been asked before, but I, I simply have to get your, your uh, feedback on the record. Um, there's, there's been mounting evidence that we have our own assets that are uh, in, enforcing a narrative upon the populace. Everything from your job at AFLSI to uh, use aliens as a cover to valet finding the, the CIA documents that he, he published in his Forbidden Silence, uh, Volume 4, about our guys uh, imitating uh, alien abductions throughout Southern America, uh, to John Alexander's uh, professions of uh, alien abductions being implanted in, in, into the minds of people. Um, I, I would love to know where we can learn more about that and where you feel that it, it it lays a part in, in all of this. Well, <clears throat> let me say this, and I've said this before, it's not a revelation, but there was a couple incidents whereby uh, the government, I'm not going to say necessarily OSI because there was a lot of other government entities involved in this, uh, posed an abduction uh, to fool somebody uh, into thinking they, they were being abducted by aliens in order to extract uh, a particular information out of that particular person. That has happened. I wasn't directly involved, but I knew of it. I was involved, but not directly involved. It was my operation. It was somebody else's. And they brought people, special people in from the 7602nd here in Tel Wing, the real men in black, so to speak, to, to facilitate this, uh, uh, this, uh, this operation. Uh, I know of... of that case, and I know of another case, but I, I was never around. The other case happened uh, in uh, in around Washington D.C. area, and I uh, I just heard about it. So those are the only two cases, and I know John Alexander knows on one of them, and that's why he's he spoke up. But but um, it wasn't any anything to do with anything. Well, it was it was a, it was an espionage operation, and they were trying to extract something from a spy, somebody that was. Uh, in the Air Force, spying for the Soviet Union. So that's that's the case that I was talking about. So, thanks, Rick. Go ahead, Lou. Uh, okay. <clears throat> um. Oh, gosh, what do I want to ask Rick Doty? There's so many questions. Um. Rick, in your opinion, 
Who is the worst person that people should be very weary of in the UFO community that you know is 100% full of it? Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> one person. Yep. Uh, well, then, that person. You said Corey Good, and you said I think David Wilcock. Is there anybody outside of that, like somebody who's active in the community right now, where you're like, "Gosh, man, that's just really bad information." And even at some point, I think that would send some people down some pretty scary rabbit holes that just end in you know wasting money or or precious time. Um, is there anyone out there like that that you would warn the community against? Well, there's a William Pullen. Um, he he spreads, he's a Phil class. Uh, he, everybody lies. Everybody, nobody in the world can tell the truth. Only William Pulling. Uh, what about Blue okay. and uh, Grush and me and Dr. Putoff and, and Eric. Well, everybody, everybody's telling a lie. He's the only one in the world who can tell the truth. So uh, I, I'd say him. There's a, there's a German guy. Um, um, that and I'm not even going to announce uh, say his name, but there's a guy in Germany that um, doesn't necessarily <clears throat> call me a liar, but he calls the United States government a liar. He thinks that the entire uh, UAP um, phenomena was created by the government to facilitate all these other weird world events. I think he's he's a uh, psychologically deranged I, I had conversations with him before um and so i i think people like that but i, I i'm not going to say anything other than what i just said about people thank you rick go ahead dr oliver thank you very much um hi rick um i think what i wanted to Oh, oh, wait, I had a follow-up question. I'm sorry. People, everybody else has got like, um, little follow-ups. It's yeah. Okay, far away. I'll just um, mute myself for a sec. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. I, I don't know why I got kicked out. Um, we're we're cycling speakers. You no, I know. But you're we're, always, we're cycling you're, speakers, but, and people have had their hands up for a I very know, I, very I know, long time. Only... So please be respectful of the space. Go ahead, Dr. Oliver. Sorry you got cut off. Okay, not to worry. Um, I was just going to ask you, Rick. Um, I've just been reflecting on the state of the topic at the moment. We're sort of near, nearing the halfway point of 2024, and it just feels a very, very different situation to where we were, say, about June last year when the, the Grouch revelations had come out. You know, there, there, there was this sense of momentum... Uh, tracking back about six years from the uh, New York Times article, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I'm not the only one who said it. I mean, loads of people have said it. But since ever since the Arrow report came out, it just seems to have sucked all the um, oxygen um, out of this topic, especially mainstream media. Not for us, perhaps, but um, it does feel like. Well, what I suppose I'm asking is, what what, it, what do you think, if anything? is going to shift uh, the needle back towards um, a, con a, a consensus of taking this topic seriously because it does feel like we're, in, we're on the verge of this being pushed back into like a sort of a fringe community of UFO ufologists like us and the mainstream, um, you know, a sense of stigma reasserting itself with the mainstream. What are your thoughts about that? Is there anything that you think at all can 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 shift that needle back to where it was last year? Hi, can you hear me? Sorry about that. Things change. I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, things change. Uh, we're halfway through the year, and there's so much information that has been put out not so much by the government but by places like this and others the, some that uh, supports phenomena uh, disclosure and some that doesn't um, there's active deception operations going on within the government i can guarantee you that dia and probably cia and probably 
uh, OSI has active uh, deceptions to keep secrets secret. And so, um, and that's going to continue. That's going to continue. Uh, and as I said, there are people in, in these group in these uh, spaces uh, and in chat rooms that, that have a mission to do because they're working for the government. Disinform or discredit people that speak up. And that confuses the people, people that are new to this, new to the phenomena, people that, and, and there were a few here and there's, I get emails uh, all the time. I get a lot of emails. I get, uh, you know, 80, 90 a day. And um, yesterday, well, as of right now, I got 266. Anyways, um, and uh, they want, they want to know more. They say, hey, listen, your name comes up. We want to know this. We want to know that. I, I, I try to answer every single email, but there's people out there that has distorted views of the subject of disclosure because they really don't know much about it except for what's on the Internet or what RO is, is, is publishing, which is, as we all know, uh, lies. And so when is this going to change? I think it's going to change when we have more hearings. You know, we our best working group is more aligned to the, uh, Senate than we are to the House of Representatives, and we we want we want hearings to take place. We want real certified whistleblowers to come in and talk about their experiences uh, and what happened to them. The ones that actually had hands-on experience with a craft uh, at a crash site, or putting a alien body in a body bag, or uh, seeing something shot down and, and, and going up to it. And those are the whistleblowers that we want to hear. I know you want to hear, I want to hear, the public wants to hear. And until that is is done, this is going to go on and on and on. And, uh, you know, one segment's going to say there's nothing to it. The other segment's going to say there's too much evidence to point towards uh, some kind of uh, UAP or UFO or ET phenomenon. Thanks, Rick. Just to reset so everybody knows where they're at, we've got James Affleck up, then Nicole, then UFO Mean Girls, Lou, and then I think it's Snoqualmie Wa. Go ahead, James Affleck. Hi, Phil. Thanks for doing the space. Uh, I was wondering, Rick, if you know anything about the kind of people that would be read into the reverse engineering program, like going back from when it started, really, like would a... Uh, would you have like the original members of the Manhattan Project read in like Ron Neumann, Feynman, uh, Oppenheimer, those kinds of people? And then also, how would they replenish that talent pool going forward? Like, would they have to recruit straight out of colleges or would they look at profess professors from colleges and that kind of thing? Uh, that, that's what I wanted to know. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, excellent question. Um, I don't. You know, I don't have, I've never been read in any kind of program where we got these scientists from. Uh, I think what, we, what uh, when I worked for Dr. Putoff, uh, the DARPA, uh, DARPA would uh, saw out uh, companies that had the expertise. So those people were somehow already either interested in the program or read into the program in some way that I wouldn't have known how they did. But uh, these companies that are getting these contracts, um, these billion-dollar contracts uh, through DARPA to rever reverse engineer something, uh, they have the experience. But where where that pool comes out of, that's a good, good question. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was just wondering because uh, it's easy to get high-level intel guys that are already cleared. It's easy to get kinetic guys for crash retrievals from special forces. But... Uh, scientists are special, and there's not that many super high-level PhD, theoretical physicists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers that you can you, that you can draw from in a secretive, secretive way. So I'd like to know. Well, well yeah, you look you look at Lockheed Martin. I mean, they got like a forty, a thirty-eight billion dollar contract with the government. Boeing, twenty-two billion. Northrop Grumman. Um, 28 billion. They just got a boost because of the B21, Raytheon, General Dynamics, L3 Harris, United Technologies, and the list goes on and on and on. And so these people are getting these massive contracts, and some of some of that is not 
uh, UFO related, but a lot of it is special access programs or sense of compartment and information pertaining to reverse engineering. And, and but you know, wh where are those companies getting these qualified people to work on it? That's you know, I never thought of that, but that's a very, very good question. Thank you. So. Thanks. Hey, uh, Nicole, is it okay if I let uh, UFO Mean Girls and Snoqualmie Washington jump ahead? Just because they haven't had a chance to ask Rick a question yet. Go ahead, UFO Mean Girls. Hi, Rick. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for hosting this space. Um, I'm a little late to the party, so this might have been covered. But I would like to know... Uh, the mic's not working. Are you speaking? Can you hear, Can't me? hear anybody? Why don't you try coming back because you're really breaking up. Go ahead, Snoqualmie. Hi, this is the first time I've spoken in this space. And um, thank you, Rick, for being here and answering these questions. Can you confirm whether Eisenhower and, for that matter, any other presidents um, have met with ETs? Because... Uh, even on Gaia's website, there's information about Eisenhower meeting at least once, but maybe three times, and making treaties. Well, I don't have any personal knowledge. Obviously, I wasn't around back in those days, but um, I've never seen any or read anything in any classified or unclassified documents during my time that would indicate that the United States government had contact with extraterrestrials president wise now what i do know i'm i'm almost positive of this that we have extraterrestrials working with us uh, and i i told a story before about j-rod out of area 51 i think i think we probably have more than one species working with us now whether we have treaties with them i i, I don't know Thanks, Rick. UFO Mean Girls, do you want to try your mic again? Yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you great. Thanks. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Uh, all right. I'll, I'm going to try and be UFO Nice Girls today. Rick, thank you for the space. Thanks for uh, taking all these questions today. I'm a little late to the party, so... I'm not hearing you. Is anybody else hearing them? I'm hearing him. I hear him. I hear him. He's going to be nice, so go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm a little late to the party. I was, I'm not sure if this has been addressed before, but why does it seem to be that um, you, like, what is the deal between you and Jason Sands and where, like, the beef is coming from? And I know he's got some things that you don't agree with. Like, he, I believe he said that uh, OSI agents would not get the report at Nellis uh, for a UFO incident and et cetera, et cetera. Like, what's your overall take on him? And where is the, um, where is the disconnect coming from? Okay, uh, I think we we beat this to death a thousand different times, but the only thing I can say is that AFOSI, and I gave a whole presentation at the beginning of this about what AFO, AFOSI and the, the Special Projects Branch does. They're responsible for every single special projects, every single sensitive compartment and information operations in the Air Force. They're in charge of protecting it, the counterintelligence uh, within the counterintelligence realm of the special projects branch. Um, Master Sergeant Sands, and first of all, I want to thank him for his 22 years of service to his country. He served honorably in the United States Air Force for 22 years. That's a long time. And he attained a, a rank of Master Sergeant, which is a two up from two down from the top enlisted person in, in, the, in the Air Force. Um, he had a good, distinguished career, but his story about going into uh, the, the Nellis Test and Training Range on an operation and setting up and then having contact with a crashed UFO and an extraterrestrial um, and then later debriefed, um, well, we know, not Rick Doty, but we know, a lot of people out there know who the two OSI agents were 
that were stationed out there in the 90s when this allegedly happened. And when that story came out, they jumped out of their shoes, basically, to inform people within intelligence and within, within certain groups that that never happened. They would have been the one that did the briefing or debriefing. They would have. Not some other entity out there that people would make up. Like, yeah, the Tooth Fairy was there too, I guess. You know, so that's the problem I have. And not just me, it's, it's other people within the community have it, has this, that same problem. That, that OSI would have taken the report and did the debriefing. And the two agents that were out there at the time said never happened. So that's the beef. That's the only beef. It's not me. It's those guys that are currently within the intelligence community, those two OSI agents, they're working for uh, another uh, an intelligence entity, a three-letter agency, but they uh, came out and told a lot of different people uh, that that didn't happen. So that's, that's the beef. Thanks, Rick. And just to let everybody know, I'm not kicking you out of the room. There's, I'm just recycling. So if you get removed, feel free to ask again. And when there's a space, I'll let you back up. Go ahead, Nicole. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the room again. I'm going to bounce off kind of some stuff you said uh, before, Rick. I really liked uh, what you said about what you think, like, disclosure could accomplish. And... <clears throat> in the scope of like pushing out things that could end up in like the medical field or the environmental you know sciences that sort of echoes what um like for instance how put off at soul gave sort of a after or between lecture sort of chat and he talked about knowing about patents or emerging tech like somewhere like i think he said in the thousands like potentially a thousand different ways that disclosure could you know be good for humanity and that also sort of echoes um what what i call the Lou crew was kind of saying when they were um going around talking about uh how important san marino was and so I was just wondering if, if you're sort of on the inside enough to know of maybe sort of more specifics. Is that related to like your time at NIDS and maybe stuff that you and you worked for under how that maybe Lou Elizondo and company had the privilege of looking into later under like OSAP or ATIP that or even the umbrella of TTSA later, if you know what I'm saying. Like, do you really think it's like that amount of tech, like based on what you know, or is it really emerging, or do you think it's still like buried deep within the shelves of, you know, only gets out like every 10 years? Well, good question. Um, I'm glad Dr. Put up brought that up first because uh, if I said it, people say, "Oh, where did you get that from?" Well, no, there are, there are. There's fact right now. Uh, there was a, um, a a person within um, the Army uh, acquisition, a DOD, excuse me, acquisitions uh, bureau that uh, told a uh, person that. The United States military has a whole fleet of vehicles right now that operate that doesn't operate on uh, fossil fuels. It hop, uh, operates on a new advanced uh, fuel system that doesn't uh, harm the environment one one bit. So that's the one question. I know there's other. I know there's some people talking about hydrogen. That, that there's a bunch of military vehicles that have that are using hydrogen. Some guy. Uh, posted something right here on X uh, I don't know, a while back saying something about he was somehow he got onto a military base and he saw that these vehicles were all oxygen uh, hydrogen um, a vehicle maybe maybe that maybe that's it but I don't know what the fuel is but uh, that's just one uh, there's um, there's technology that we're getting that the military gets now normally uh, in my time in the military got new new technology uh, probably five to ten years before it filtered out to the public. In fact, I tell people 
and that in 1980, I got a laptop computer. I did a laptop computer. Uh, and when did they come out? About 10 years later. So they're out there. And when, when DARPA d develops something that's advanced, the military normally gets it first uh, before, uh, unless it's weapons related, obviously. And so, yes, there are probably thousands of things out there that could be released tomorrow. Uh, and some of them I, I've seen and, and, and knew about before. And, and these things could help society. There's apparently a, and I don't even know if I want to go into this, but in not a lot of details, but apparently there are a couple of soldiers that were injured, injured in, I'm not sure it was Iraq or Afghanistan, that had spinal cord injuries. But there was some treatment, and I don't know where the treatment came from, that allowed those, uh, those soldiers to walk again. Now, uh, the rumor within a certain group of people is that that came from the extraterrestrials. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm just telling you that if these things are in fact true, we and we have the technology that were given to us by extraterrestrials, one species or the other, uh, and they can help society, God, bring it out. Let society have it. Give it to companies that can manufacture it and and, and, and duplicate it and put it out so every every human being can have these things to better society, whether it's environmental or health related, or maybe some kind of new appliance uh, that, that's, that doesn't operate on electricity. Thanks, Rick. Hey, Lou, thanks for being patient with me. Go ahead. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, you got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, I appreciate, you know, rotating everybody out and stuff. I, I totally get it. Um, I just want, you know, there's thank the, you. there are some folks who <laughs> won't be rotated out. So I just thank you for clearing that up. Um, <clears throat> Rick, I have some really great military buddies that are also experiencers and, um, I think, honestly, one of the best things that you could do, and if you are interested in this, I could, I would love to set it up, um, where we do an open space like this or an interview with these other military guys, one of them being Air Force, former Air Force, and try and pick at you as much as we can so we can get as much foilable things to verify some of the things you're saying, because I think that's the biggest thing, is people want verification. I think at least for me in this field, I'm kind of done with, trust me, bro. <laughs> like, I don't want to do any more trust me, bros, in this conversation. And and the thing with, I don't want to say the thing with you, Rick, because I don't want to offend you, but it's a lot of trust me, bro. This is real. And and all of the documents that are publicly out there, unfortunately, aren't any smoking guns. And that's what the community needs is a smoking gun. So would you be down to just have some real military guys that are also incredibly good at foying things? To uh, as, you're a, as you're a Twitter handler, Rick, I would say that you'll need to consult with me first on that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've I mean why, why, why is I've the truth, this. the truth shouldn't be afraid of these questions, right? No, no, no but we did this so a long the, the time trolls ago. trying to get at the truth would, would be a problem, though. We want to avoid trolls, that's what we're trying to do here. We, we, we did this a long time ago, about a year and a half ago, we did this in a, in a <laughs> podcast where we listed, I listed, uh, and, and I got the stuff from Charlie, uh, the guy I mentioned earlier. Um, I think he gave me, I don't know how many websites, just go to those websites. And we listed those websites and they were right, out so there. I, I'm aware of the websites, websites, but like, again, like out of all of the websites, out of all of that stuff, there's been nothing yet that has come out as a smoking gun. And that's, again, that's kind of what we're looking for. So clearly the stuff that you went over a year ago hasn't been good enough to move the needle, right? So I think we just need to start over and try again. And, you know, Clint, like, I think, 
I think I've I've had at least a few spaces here in the last couple of weeks with you where I think you know where I'm coming from, and we're not here to troll Rick. And just one last question: Where did you get the where did you get Ricky Ticky from? Is that is there is there a story behind that? Well, first of all, let me tell you that that's your opinion that there's nothing out there, but there's many other people out there that would say there's a there's a conglomerate of information out there. Okay, so what's what's, what's the about one me. piece thing? What's the one no, piece? Uh, not necessarily talk about me or, or what I said, but what other people, Grush and and Lou and other people have said. There's there's uh, there's tons of information out there. And and I'm not going to do your research for you. No, no, There's I know, people. I know. But the thing, the, the thing is, I Rick, is, and other people. I know, Rick, but I've had Elizondo on my show seven times, and I don't know if you know my backstory, but he manipulated the fuck out of me. He used the fuck out of me, Rick. And so, like again, I'm not. I'm not trying to cast doubt. I'm trying to get to the core of this, and and unfortunately. None of that data is a smoking gun. And if it is, can you point me to the best piece of evidence that 100% confirms this that's out there right now in the public domain? Somebody shut him off? I can't hear you. He wanted to know no, if he asked, was... He he well, okay, to so I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it. Can you hear me, Rick? No, yeah, just make it brief, though, Lou. No, I, I, Rick, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. okay. I, I, was, hear you. I was telling you just quickly, as quickly as I can. I know time's valuable. Um, I had Lou Elizondo on my show seven times, including his father. He manipulated and used me, tr like, really badly. <laughs> he, he, he blackmailed me for an apology. And so the reason why I'm asking these questions is because... You know, I want the truth just as badly as anyone. And and so the question is, like, what is the best piece of evidence that you can point to that is in the public domain that is the smoking gun that what you're saying is true? Well, first of all, Lou's a uh, counterintelligence officer. Remember that. And he's pretty good at it. I'm right. I know. But that. I like in the like old days. No, I get it, but like... Okay, 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 I'm going to tell you. Okay, okay, all right, we heard enough. Uh, go out and buy the Blue Planet Project Trilogy. Um, and, and it's not me saying this, but there, there are about... Um, Is that a movie? No, it's a book. Can okay. you spell the last word, Project what? The Blue Planet Project Trilogy, T-R-I-L-O-G-Y. It's Thank a, uh, it, there, there's also, there's three books in one. One's a Blue Planet Project, Alien Life Forms. Second one, Blue Planet Project, Lost Chapters. And the next one is Blue Planet Project Conspiracy. This thing was a band, uh, uh, it was, it was written by Gil Carlson. It was banned, he was trying to publish it for several years and it was, uh, banned, but, but it, it got published and, uh, it contains, um, literally, and I'm not exaggerating, and that's not me saying, but hundreds of pages of information that would be normally classified. Just read that. Just read that. All right. Move on. Where, where okay. I've recycled some speakers, so y'all don't get mad at me. Okay, Jay Jess, go ahead. Thanks for waiting. Jay Jess, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I was just posting. Um... So you t you touched on the fact that there's people in our chat rooms and on Twitter who are sent to confuse and um, cause problems. Hey, uh, somebody talking? If we get back I, I'm thinking Jay Jess, but I, I cannot. Yeah, Jay Jess, I, I hear can, her, but I um, can hear. I can hear. Jess, Jess, ask, drop down uh, and, and come back up, Jay Jess? Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, let's jump over to James Affleck real quick. Oh, just another thing I remembered. Um, do you know anything about a group called the Nassau Group that seems to operate out of Bahamas? I think um, Tim Taylor from NASA, Na NASA is part of it, and also Thomas Townsend Brown. Do you know anything about that group? No. I've seen it on documents or anything. No, never heard of them. Ah, okay, thanks. Go ahead, Jay Just. 
Rick, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you great. I hear you now. Okay. So you you touched on the fact that there are people in in spaces and on the uh, the app who are sent here to cause problems. I mean, we've experienced a lot of uh, turmoil in our spaces, but I'm wondering, how do you spot them? Like, how do you know who's who and what's what? Um, and are we on any lists? Uh, I'm sure everybody... Well, first of all, there are people that come in here. As you know, you can listen anonymously, but there's a way somebody informed me how to figure out who they are. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the room knows how to do that. And um, and then secondly, there's people that just come out here and, and you know, list their, uh, their names uh, or their screen names. And there's people that I know from other uh, contacts who they are and some some of them are my friends there's friends and people in here that are my friends that are that, are, that i that i've known uh worked with uh, so th i know who they are and they are here to monitor and a couple of them like i'm looking now not now if they're still there yep one two yeah there's stuff there's three of them here that are work for you for the intelligence community. One works for AFOSI special projects. One, one works for um, DIA and one works for uh, another agency. Now, uh, now, there's nothing wrong with them coming in and listening, but they're listening to everything we're, everybody's saying and, and it's public forum. So yeah, they, they, they listen and maybe they know who you are or, or somebody else. And then there's people that come in here that I'm, I'm sure that asks the gotcha questions or try to discredit me because they're actually working for an intelligence community that doesn't want the word out there. They don't want Richard Doty to talk about an incident to happen someplace or Richard Doty to talk about this or that. They don't want me to. And those are the people that I uh, will, will call out and, and, and identify. But, um, the people come in here, anybody can walk, welcome. I, I set it up for anybody. I didn't set it up for only my friends or, or the people I follow. I think you can do that, but I don't do that. Right. So they're the ones you got to be worried about. But how you spot, like, an obvious um, person who's, like, I mean, there's people who will lurk and not say anything. And then there's people who participate, but, like, how do you know who's good, who's bad? Like, is there any telltale signs, any operations that you can, um, you know, like typical uh, operational uh, tactics that you can spot? <laughs> I think the questions, how questions are worded uh, to me, when we let somebody talk, identify them as... Uh, as a plant, uh, somebody dis disinform uh, that, that that I I I could figure out because of how they how they worded the question or they bring up things about security procedures that would fool you and others, but it wouldn't fool me. I mean, I worked in that thing, all, all that. Nothing, nothing really has changed. There's some uh, special access programs names and identifiable uh, things that have changed over the years, but they're all the the basically the same. You could go to Title 32, a Code of Federal Regulation, that dictates exactly how the security system is set up in the United States government. And although I don't know every single paragraph, but in there it talks about the Department of Defense Industrial, Regula uh, Industrial Security Regulation uh, 5200.1. That dictates security uh, it's classification, classification of documents and things like that. I know all that. But when they come in and say something, trying to trick me or got you, uh, that's how I can identify them. I think this may be an example of that. I don't know. Um, there was a question that was sent in, Rick. This person was having difficulty getting the mic. Uh, their name is Dr. T. And this is the question that they're asking if you were a witness to that 
recovery program, you'll surely know its name. And given that you are no longer an NDA, then you'd have no problem identifying it. So we can begin a FOIA request. Could you please provide that name? Uh, I think they're wanting the name of the program for the FOIA request, if I'm understanding that correctly. Hopefully I am. Well, if it, what they, they're saying is no, like, I'm just okay. reading. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I they can go and do it themselves. I'm not going to do their work for them. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's whatever. I'm not going to. Uh, it sounds like what they're asking you is was there a name for the crash recovery uh, program that you worked on, and are you willing to give it so that they have a pinpoint to kind of start the FOIA? Well, there were more than one. Um, and um, so I'm not going to, you know. Okay, so, so, okay, so the, the next, person, the, the in line, the 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 next person in line to speak, do not speak over me, yeah. thank you. The I'm next sorry. person in line to speak is Spoofy. Thanks for being patient. Go ahead, Spoofy, and take the mic. Hi. Um, I want to ask a question from... Um, and then here, um, is there any information, can you hear me? Is there any information on fifth dimensional entities? Is anyone hearing spoofy talk or am I the one having mic problems? I hear them. You do hear them. Okay. Thank you. Any information on fifth dimensional entities? Um, and I can't any, hear anybody. Um, talking i can't hear him yeah i'm not hearing spoofy drop down and come back up and we'll jump over to you fred thanks for waiting thanks rick uh in terms of something you've personally experienced or believe is true from what you've read or done in your career what would be the most disturbing or shocking thing that you've come across the thing that sort of just knocked you knocked your socks off uh, abductions I was never briefed into abductions initially, so I didn't know anything about abductions during the time after I uh, received the uh, initial briefing on, on our United States government involvement with extraterrestrials. Uh, and then later on, I, I started getting cases involving abductions, and we didn't have anybody uh, at the OSI office there at Kirtland or Area 51 that had anything to do with abductions. They, did, they knew as much as I did about them. And of course, when somebody comes in and says this to you, to me, and I hadn't been briefed into it, you doubt him. And that's the worst thing you can do on legitimate abductions is doubting them, thinking, oh, you know, they're crazy. They're talking about aliens came in their bedroom last night and took them. So, um, but when I got involved, when I was briefed into it after the Myrna Hansen case, um, the story is I was, <clears throat> I had, hadn't been briefed yet, and uh, we set up a, I sent up a report to headquarters regarding the Myrna Hansen. It was just an initial report. There wasn't any you know, real, uh, a lot of details in it. But there were so many things that were, was idiosyncrasies in her story and what really we knew about uh, that, that I figured that headquarters wants to know about it. And, you know, four or five days later, two uh, people from the Defense Intelligence Agency comes to Kirtland. And they're outside, uh, you know, we're in a secure facility there and, you know, the guards have to let them in and they come up and wanting to talk to me. And they had these credentials and things. And, and then we get a uh, droplet, it's called, and we get a, a teletype from her, their headquarters to our teletype machine saying, you know, so-and-so is coming down, they have clearances and so forth. So we know that they're cleared. Anyway, they come into my office and they introduce themselves and they said, yeah, we're here to talk about this report that you sent up on this, uh, this abductee, uh, Myrna Hansen. I said, oh, okay, okay. I said, yeah, well, what do you guys want to know about it? He said, well, we're from that, that desk and we need more information. I said, what desk? He said, the abduction desk. And I said, DIA has an abduction desk? He said, yeah. Oh, he said, you're not briefed into the program. And he mentioned the program's name. And I said, no, <laughs> I'm not. So, okay, can't talk to you. We got to get you briefed. And so I eventually got briefed into the program. And then now I realized then that there was more to this abduction than, than just disbelieving people. If we have a, 
if we have people that are specializes in that up in, in Washington, D.C., damn, this, this is a real phenomenon. So that would be the, the startling, uh, listening to these poor people, I mean, not poor people, but these uh, unfortunate people that are being abducted. And right at that time, we were dealing almost exclusively with military people, except for Myrna Hansen. She wasn't, but she had a connection because she was claiming she was being abducted and taken out the Kirtland Air Force Base. So that's the connection that we, we justified in, in, in investigating that case. Thank you. You're welcome. And for the people out there that um, there's a form, Sensitive Compartmented Information Debriefing Memorandum. It's um, it's form it's uh, DD form eighteen forty eight. That is the form. There might be some line when we're uh, being debriefed, um, and there's it, all the projects names are in above, and then uh, then you you swear that you I mean you sign saying that you were debriefed uh, or briefed. It can go either way. So that's the form. It's not the 86 form that that one guy said. It's DD form 1848. And that's the form that I had to sign. Okay. <clears throat>